intriguing labyrinths of rock and stone found deep below the Earth's surface have become our playgrounds. Canada has an abundance of open rock faces that lead you far away from the light of day. This sounds like the start of a thriller film, but it's actually the growing sport of caving. The recreational pastime of exploring wild cave systems has become popular, as now it's more accessible and safer for those looking to take the plunge. In this episode, we go with a bunch of beginners into the belly of the rat's nest cave to push our limits underground. So, come, follow us into the darkness. Just outside of Canmore, Alberta, we make our way along the quiet, rocky trail to visit one of the longest caves in Canada. Our professional guide leads a crew of us to the entrance of a wild, undeveloped cavity of the Grotto Mountain to gear up in our harnesses, coveralls, knee pads, gloves, helmets, and headlamps. This area is closed off to preserve the cave and keep out any riffraff and wildlife. It doesn't take long before we're crawling on all fours, sliding down on our butts into the unknown. For the steep, dark and risky portions, we attach our harness leashes to the cables to secure ourselves to prevent any injury or insurance claims from taking place. We trekked along the rocky path one step at a time, shifting, scrambling, and crawling further into the abyss with only our headlamp and the faint voice of the guide encouraging our next move. Various bones and pictographs are found a short distance from the entrance. The bones are primarily the animal variety and have said to have been tossed in by early inhabitants decades prior. It's definitely interesting to see. As we continued on the path, there was portions of this cave that had a lower ceiling, allowing us to take in some of the countless geological formations and mineral decorations found here. It's pretty cool. Like, literally. The cave sits roughly at 4.5 degrees Celsius year-round, making it feel like we were hanging out in a refrigerator. Things get pretty tight in some spots. We slide, wiggle, and roll through some of the warm-up and challenging squeezes on our way to an 18-meter descent. That's a six-story drop. Our guide secures us to the rock face, connected a carabiner to our harness, got us to lean back from the edge and we safely lowered ourselves down at our own speed. We rappel into the blackness of the cave and it felt like we were on an extreme expedition in search of treasure. You're probably thinking, they're at the bottom now. Nope, not even close. We ventured down through the water-worn passages and learned more about the ancient cave formations, what stalactites and stalagmites are and how they were formed. The corridors opened up into a large cavern known as the Grand Gallery, where our voices bounced off the walls and continuously echoed. Then, when we stopped speaking, we felt the serenity of the cave. Enjoying the peacefulness of the experience, our guide softly describes how some of the caves were formed and how others were found. Passageways connect to other chambers, and the jagged rocks become smoother. The ceiling seems to have liquefied, and the stone icicles hung down from the roof of the cave. These suspended mineral deposits are brittle, and have been dated at three to 4,000 years old, almost as old as the Great Pyramids of Egypt. If you want to see the pyramids, then check out our other video on how to plan your next trip. You can find the link to the video above or at the end of this episode. But in the meantime, click that subscribe button so you can stay connected and be inspired to take your next adventure. Let's head back into the cave. This cave is known as the Grotto, which is the lowest point on the tour. This is the end of the line for now as we're stopped by water, but new discoveries are still being made in the Rat's Nest Cave. We enjoyed our time in the belly of the mountain and taking in the surroundings. The low-lying rocks and walls were super smooth and alien-like. We even had to watch our step in this area as it was slippery and fragile at the same time. It doesn't feel like we have been away from the surface that long, but we spent almost four hours underground, and now we have to make our way back up to the mouth of the cave. On the way, we got to conquer the laundry chute, a tight manhole-sized opening, and maneuver up a steep incline where we had to crouch and lunge all while watching our head. Now was not the time to rush things, so we went slow. We were able to make it out of this cave a little tired, a little dirty, but with lots of exciting stories and appreciation for this living museum. If you're new to caving and wish to participate, then we strongly recommend you do so with the support and guidance of a professional. Guides are there for your safety, as well as the preservation and conservation of the cave. In addition, we want to offer you our top five tips for caving. Wear sturdy closed-toed shoes that lace up with good tread. Have layers and dress warm inside the cave. Have a snack or water with you in your bag and pack in a bar or two. 
Don't bring anything into the cave that can't fit into your pocket safely. If you plan to bring your cell phone or a small camera, keep them close to your chest and protect them in a pouch or a bag to keep the humidity and dust away. Descending the Rat's Nest Cave is truly a must-do experience when in the Canadian Rockies and is great for adventure seekers, science lovers, geologists, historians and explorers that are looking to get up close with what lies beneath the surface. We are the artist of adventure and we want to spark your creativity to help you experience adventure. Stay connected, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great advice and inspiration. Now, get out there and face the elements. Face the elements. Face the elements.